But even though we can't really hear the music that we want, yeah. you create it. Right. That goes back to something that you said in the first part of this interview. You are independent yeah. and thriving off of independency. Now see, that's what hip hop really was. Right. Too Short perfected that. Right. E-40 perfected that. Right. Damn Big Seven <laughs> perfected that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hardware, shout out to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, you know, many others because you cracked the code. Right. The code was business to customer relatability right. and um, relationship. Right. Kevin Hart perfected that. That's why he's the most hated mainstream comedian in the comic community. Because he learned how to use Twitter and Instagram to his embitterment rather than just say, yeah, I'm going to be here. Right. So I ask you this then. We know we, we live some of this history that we're going to go back to. Can somebody be hip hop today without their phone? Since technology is so much of a great thing to a lot of the millennials. Can someone be hip hop without their phone? Sure. I mean, there's many ways you could take that question. So, can somebody be hip hop in today's society? Can somebody be hip hop without their phone? And I'm asking a legend who's been in the game. Um, I mean, you can, but why would you want to be? Even for those of us who came up without them, why would you want to be? Why would you want to be hip hop without your phone? Yeah. As a businessman, because it cuts your money. As a consumer, mm. if you don't own it, yeah. and the system goes, so does your music. I'm only talking on the music sense right now. You're saying what though? I'm saying what? I mean, You're talking as far as like streaming or, or all of it. I mean, like I said, let's talk about the whole gamut. Because I mean, as a producer, yeah. if you own your beats, right, you yeah. have them. Yeah. I'm a rapper in Nebraska. I get a stress beat. Yeah. It's on. It's on whatever beat website you put your stuff on. If I don't contact you directly, mm -hmm. I go to download the beat. Yeah. And the, and the, and America starts a civil war and the grid goes out. I can't get your beat. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, science fiction. Godzilla comes to North. <laughs> he steps on the Prudential Building, right? Okay. Say that tower went down, right? Yeah. And I'm listening to Griselda, The Locks, yeah. Docs Diggler, yeah. Drift, Stress Boogie. And he steps on Prudential and the grid goes down. Mm -hmm. I'm streaming. Guess whose music I don't have anymore? Right. It's gone. We technology he's taken us away from the physical yeah. to the the ghost, the MP3. Right. And people will be like, yeah, that's my song, and then they don't even know the lyrics. So they go to catch the vibe, and when the vibe is gone, there is no hip hop. Are people really hip hop without their phone? I mean, in that way, that's different. I'm I'm saying yeah, I know I am, but what I was saying was, why would you want to be? Because it's a, another outlet to other people. It's easy. You're right. Yeah. The phone is supposed to be your marketing tool. But that's my point. And people are using it for their bread and butter. Uh -huh. And that's the problem. That's why I say with you, you crack the code. Yeah. You are a business to customer relator. Yeah, sure. So you want it, I got it, come get it. Right. Not if you want it, go see him and he'll give it to you yeah. and he'll break me off later. Yeah. Cause the middleman syndrome was always X'd out and now people are living for the middleman, not living for the integrity, the honor, or the direct relationship between their fan base and themselves. Right. And that's where people fail. Right. In the past, when you wanted to go to a show, you had to show up. Right. And then when you showed up, like you said, sometimes in the back somewhere, yeah. You heard the real show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, like. look, I go to Giants games. Sometimes the, the, the game is on the field. Sometimes the game is in the stands. <laughs> People throwing hands. Right. At a show, yeah, the person's performing, but the real performance is where those people who are hungry as hell trying to get on are out, out there slaying each other with words. Right. Why is that being sacrificed to you, to the middleman, you think? I couldn't answer that. I don't know. I guess people are just looking for the easiest way. And if that's the way that's being presented, then that's what they're doing now. 
is it the best? No, but you know what I'm saying? I, I guess people are looking for the easiest. It presents itself as being the easiest. It presents itself. It may not be, but it presents itself as being the easiest option. Especially if you're somebody who, let's say you feel like maybe you can't distribute to however many people across whatever vast region. Mm -hmm. And the little man can do that for you. It seems like that's the best option for you. Mm -hmm. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, but Yeah, it's probably because it's being presented as the best option. Like I said, I don't know if it is, but it's there. I don't think it's the best option. I think there's an alternative, and you pay for your alternative. Right. Like I said, poison tastes sweet. Yeah. You drink enough of it, you're going to die. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, medicine is bitter. Mm -hmm. But if you take enough of it, you're strong. Right. So then, people are not taking their medicine. They're taking the poison instead. I ask you this. A historical aspect, do you think technology would have heightened 90s hip hop or you think it would have killed it? Well, that's a that's a question that can't be answered. Really? No. No. Because how do you answer how do you answer a what if to an era that that was on the cusp of being so creative? All they did was advance in the 90s. 90s hip hop it was advancing. 90s hip hop is the meat of hip hop culture. But that's my point. So you advanced from the era before and you just kept taking it up. So, mm -hmm. in a sense, yes. The answer would be yes. You think so? Absolutely. But you know why? Tell because me. the era before then, think, I right, think about you saying that the 90s era was the meat of hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Did the 90s, do you have the best production? No. What did? What had the era had the best production? Because I would say yes. Sonically, now, like the two, I, I got a kind of, I kind of got out of hip hop during the Lil Wayne era. I couldn't take it. That's why, like okay. I said, I, I probably missed your music because that was around the 2000s. Right. So around that time, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. But sonically, the beats today are more fuller than the beats of the 90s. The people who had more full beats in the '90s, yeah. they were, um, they would be. That's, that's why they did it. Always kind of pulled it as the top of the game. Like yeah. Dr. Dre had full beats. His music, there was no ghosts in his beats. There's no air. Prim Premier, no, no ghosts. Yeah, Q-Tip. Yeah, Dr. Period. You know, Showbiz. Their beats were like there. But then you had people who were more experimenting with sound, so it kind of killed it. Then you had the MCs because they were pouring money into hip hop in the '90s that just came out. That you were like, okay, that nigga's yeah. not gonna make it. But think about who you just named. You just named a bunch of producers from the '90s, right? But like I said, those are the people that so, we have at the height of the game. True. Right. And those are the people who benefited from technology. Technology did that. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 the knowledge of what you're doing from the ones before you to using the technology that you have now. So my answer would be yeah. Okay. You know, it's just this. It goes back to the same thing with the with the with the SP twelve hundred or the MPC two thousand or the sixty or the whatever you're using. Those things that weren't available to those before. Now you come out with a better machine. That's technology that did that. So the sound changes. It gets a little more advanced. Now you can layer things. And now you can have more. Yeah. I think, yes, technology would have made it, and it did make it better. Okay. I mean, like I said, it's all opinion, and there's no right or wrong. It's perspective. But that middleman thing bothers me, because check this out. The population of New Jersey is 8.9 million people. Sure. By itself. Right. You're an independent artist. Right. If you traveled up and down the state of New Jersey, and you got 8% of that, you're... Your 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 equity. If you sold a ten dollar CD or album, because it don't be sell MP3s now, right? So if you sold a ten dollar um, project right. to eight percent, thirteen point seven percent, let's just say, of that of those people, you would make over five hundred thousand to about two million dollars. Okay, that's just in the state of New Jersey. 
So distribution is marketing and promotion. I don't think people market and promote correctly. You as the person who connected to, as an artist to the customer, you were able to get those people, market, catch their ear, benefit, and go back to the lab. No, you weren't doing sold out events or whatever, but that's okay. You did that and that brought the attention to others. Like, yo, what y'all knocking down here? Who the hell is stressed? Let me get him in Philly. Right. Philly's population is 14 million. It's, four, it's a little bigger than Jersey's. So then I think the population of people of color in um, Philadelphia is a little higher. It's not about like 8.8 .8 to 13. Probably about like maybe 15%, you know what I'm saying? And say you got 6% of those people. So you're taking your two mil and you're adding to that. Mm -hmm. That's how the business to customer model works. Mm -hmm. The business to distribution machine to customer is this. If I don't put about $300,000 per month into you, you're not gonna get what you need to be seen. Right. You broke the code. So why now does it seem that everybody's trying to go away from the cold instead of swimming back into what works? That's not a now thing. That's always been a thing. But the thing is, traditional business never changed. The tradition stayed the same. That's why the rich stay rich and the poor get poorer and have more bills. Sure. Okay, it's a now thing. Let's flip it out of a now thing. You know why Griselda pops the way they do? Started to keep bringing them up? They would do shows where they sell $200 t-shirts. Okay. So no matter how much you stream, the price of that shirt covered a lot of that cost. And if they only did 100 shirts, how much money is that? You see what I'm saying? And even if we don't want to talk about money, 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 it's exposure. And a lot of people are making music today and they're not being exposed. Right. Samad Savage is one of the great MCs in Jersey. He has a legacy that's going to live. Right. I think Samad should be bigger than what he is. You know, it's the now of today that kills him rather than lifts him up. He probably will be bigger than he is. I, I don't, yeah, I don't, look, the business model does not change and the way um, the music, the music business in itself does not change, honestly. The music business is not for the artists. True, say that. Nobody, nobody focuses on the business. They only focus on the, the music business. business is not for the artists. If you're trying to deal with a company, they're only out for themselves. They're not out for you. So they look for whatever they feel is going to make them money. If it makes them money by dumping three hundred thousand a month into you, that's what they're gonna do. If it doesn't make them money, then they won't do it. I just, I mean, that's what you have to realize whenever you want to go into the music. Do you want to deal with that, or do you want to? grassroot it yourself it may take you longer maybe you'll have a core fan base maybe that way you will have a core fan base. who knows it's all a it's all a roll of dice but you got to figure what do i want to do what am i honestly as an artist when you're dealing with the music business you have to think what am i willing to deal with and that's it and i wouldn't say that that's right or wrong it's what am i willing to deal with you know and like I say, you, but if you go into it knowing the business of it ain't really for you and the business doesn't really change it's like especially when artists make advances and things start to shift more towards them they'll come up with a new rule mm -hmm. okay it's like okay now artists are making money it's like before you know you're gonna get a fucked up deal make your money on tour make your money selling merch you know what our labels say they're making too much fucking money on tour and doing other shit. Let's come up with the 360. Fuck it. We want a piece of everything. You know? So now it's like, now they put their hand, they put everything back into the hands of the label again. And then it's like, oh, let's figure out some other shit. And then it's like, okay, now streaming is here and you're going to make a percent of a percent of a percent off of whatever the fuck we're going to make thousands off of. You know what I mean? So it's like, you got to know what you're dealing with before you get into it and you got to figure out either a way around it or you got to figure this is what I'm willing to deal with or not and that's just pretty much it it's really cut and dry the way it sounds because I think it really is cut and dry mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't feel like that because you're talking about something that people dream their whole life about doing so it's different when you come at it from that perspective